Dynamite Heady. Of all of the Sega Genesis games where your weapon is your own detachable head, this has got to be the best of them. Bearing in mind that there are like only two of them that come to mind that are like that, still, that's two more than you'd think, right? And to be fair, one of those games is only like that in North America. The Japanese version is completely different. Dynamite Heady is a game by Treasure, but I think it's one of their more overlooked games. When you say the name Treasure to me, my thoughts immediately go to Gunstar Heroes and Alien Soldier, specifically on the Genesis. And if I may take this show off the Genesis for a moment. Mischief Makers. Definitely, definitely Mischief Makers. But I think that Dynamite Heady is certainly one of the games people don't necessarily flock to as much. Actually, come to think of it, same with Light Crusader, their sort of isometric action-adventure game that was kind of like Solstice slash Equinox. I really have to talk about Light Crusader at some point. It's a pretty interesting little game. And... Ooh, Rakugaki Showtime on the PlayStation 1. That was an amazing game they put out that I hear no one ever talk about. I should probably talk about that game at some point too. That game is awesome. Kind of like Power Stone. But this is one of their games on the Genesis that I think is more overlooked. And I think that's a little unfair because it is, at its core, a pretty creative and interesting game. The story of Dynamite Heady is as such. There's an evil dark puppet master who's trying to either convert or throw away puppets that suit his will. Our protagonist, Hetty, the scrap puppet, is considered undesirable and thrown away. Fortunately, he stages an escape and works slowly to overthrow this dark puppet master to save the day, all while being constantly harassed by Trouble Bruin, this weird, angry, brown cat teddy bear thing that shows up from time to time, and, and half the time he's basically a comic relief villain, as well as Heather, who might be your rival, or an antagonist, or your love interest, or a femme fatale of some sort. The plot to this game is very, very limited, and it's kind of a little bit all over the place, and it's not super well explained, and I blame the localization here, because there are some differences between the North American and Japanese version, and one of the biggest things is that there's a lot more dialogue in the Japanese version. For example, the recurring antagonist Trouble Bruin is Mr. Maruyama, and he's a purple, not angry teddy bear cat thing, but he actually taunts Hetty and actually talks to him pretty much with every single encounter. There's a lot more dialogue in the game and a lot more is thrown at you that makes a little bit more sense. I mean, assuming that you can read Japanese anyway. And it just feels like a lot of that was cut from North America. There's also a few like goofy references that got removed. In the North American version, the closest thing to like cute goofy wordplay and jokes is that every title of every stage is a bad knockoff of a famous movie for reasons. Yeah, I don't know, the translation and the localization of this game is just kind of weird, and also, for whatever reason, it's substantially harder in the North American version. So if you're going to be playing this, especially on the Steam Genesis collection like I am, swap the region to Japanese. You can thank me later. First of all, you get a purple cat thing, but also, you actually get continues, because the North American version doesn't have those. At least not by default, and that kinda sucks. However, there isn't all that much of a plot one way or the other, you're basically just a good guy trying to save the day. What is interesting though, is this entire game takes place as framed through a stage play. And this actually makes its way into the level design as well, because frequently you'll be pulled into the backstage, and you'll have to navigate the environments trying to avoid various light fixtures and scaffolding to get back to the front stage. It's interesting that this game is sort of first and foremost a stage play, or more accurately a puppet play, and that it works quite well with the theming. I like that a lot. Now, Dynamite Heady at its core is a fairly standard side-scrolling platform game. You typically run from the left to the right avoiding obstacles, although every stage does have its own unique gimmicks and concepts. It reminds me a little bit of Donkey Kong Country in that regard, where every stage would have unique gimmicks that would give you a separate experience for every level. Hetty is equipped primarily with, as his name would suggest, his head, which is used as his primary weapon. He can fling it at enemies as well as grappling points to move him around the environment, which makes him fairly versatile for only having effectively one attack. However, while he does only have one attack, he has numerous power-ups, as well as some power-downs that can also be used beneficially? There's about a dozen or so power-ups that vary from flinging a whole bunch of stars out of your face, making your character entirely invisible, making your character very, very small, which makes you fairly ineffective in terms of combat, 
but you can go around different environments and take alternate routes. You have stuff like the big stone Buddha head, which makes you incredibly slow and absolutely useless. This thing is entirely a burden. But then you get things like the sleep cap, which, like Kirby, makes you immediately go to sleep and you have no control over your character. But in a weird twist of actually being beneficial, you heal over the course of using this. You also have a couple other heads that allow you to turn the game into a side-scrolling shmup, because this is a treasure game and they can't stick to one genre at any one point. And it's just very interesting to see how versatile Hedy really is and how many different power-ups he has available to him. It really does make the game a lot more interesting than just flinging your head at opponents, you know, that sort of being it. But of course, Hedy himself can only go so far in a game, you need to also have interesting and engaging stages, and this game has it in spades. Like I said, it's a little bit like Donkey Kong Country in its methodology of stage design, utilizing individual gimmicks for each and every stage, but they are all very, very memorable. Some of them are as simple as the stage actually tilting under you, using some really neat like 3D effects that almost look kind of Mode 70 for the Genesis, as well as levels that are entire fakeouts, which is actually kind of cool. Although there is one level that seems more like a budgetary constraint type thing. You basically show up at this one boss area ready to throw down and collect your magical key, which is the MacGuffin of the game, and one of your sidekicks shows up and says, hey, your rival slash love interest slash maybe antagonist Heather showed up and already defeated the boss, so there's nothing here. Let's go. And I honestly don't know if that's supposed to be quirky humor or just the developers ran out of budget and couldn't put a boss in here. I, I genuinely don't know. But the bosses you do fight are incredibly varied and brilliant. At one point, Trouble Bruin shows up only to get curb stomped by a giant dog. And then you have to fight that dog who then knocks off your little angel friend who points out the weak points, which is a nice little visual touch that I don't think is all that visible in this. At one point, you have to fight this dress-up doll and its various costumes. You have to fight some giant head through its entire life cycle in a shmup. This game is unbelievably creative and every boss throws something completely new and different at you. And I have to admit, I love that this game provides so much variation to their experiences and makes it a lot more memorable, I think. It should also be noted that while there are a ton of power-ups, you find them scattered about at various points in the stages and boss fights, but the interesting thing is they aren't just given to you. They are usually given to you sort of through a roulette system, but there's rarely ever more than two or three options available to you. So you kind of have to figure out exactly what power-up you need at what point and what would be most beneficial to you. But you're usually given multiple choices, some that might be total fake-outs that actually put you in a worse spot, because again, some are downgrades, especially in specific situations, as well as others that are just outright better for handling the situation. It's especially grim when you're in a boss fight and you get the Buddha mask that slows you down and you can't do anything, and you just have to sort of sit there and feebly hope the enemy doesn't hit you. It can be incredibly frustrating, but also exciting just to roll that dice and see what sort of power-ups you get in the situation and then try and make the best of it. One of the weirder aspects of this game is it has bonus stages in the form of this really awkward basketball minigame. And as you complete each variation of this minigame, you unlock a letter that like spells out a secret phrase to fight an extra boss at the end, which gives you like a, an extra ending. It seems like a lot of extra faff for very little reward. The minigame itself is not very enjoyable to begin with. It's just a really weird way to have done that, you know? That said, I think Dynamite Hedy's greatest strengths just come from its variance and its creativity. It is a great creative game, but unfortunately it is hampered substantially by the difficulty increase of the localization, and I think that probably hurt its sales a fair bit too. And because of that difficulty increase, it is a very hard to get through game. Like, the game itself, even on the Japanese version, is certainly very, very challenging. It's a treasure game, of course it's going to be challenging, but having to go through the entire game without any continues, at least by default, makes this a substantially harder game. I can only imagine is to combat rentals so that you can't beat it in one single rental sitting. There were a few Genesis games that did that. I know that Contra Hardcore also did that and turned one of the easiest Contra games ever into like one of the hardest. And it's a shame because the game is maybe not the most spectacular game on the Genesis, maybe not even close to being the most spectacular treasure game on the Genesis, but it's a creative, fun romp with a lot of silliness, a lot of goofiness, memorable characters, interesting stage gimmicks. It's a good game. The overall presentation to Dynamite Hetty is excellent. I don't think it's going to be pushing any boundaries for technical achievements on the Genesis, certainly, aside from 
the few bits of like 3D effects that they employ, but it's got a nice unified aesthetic, it's got a cool theme, and the enemies and character designs are unbelievably creative and really, really fun. And there's little details that are just great. Like I said, when you fight the first real boss, your little sidekick that points out all the boss's weak points tries to show you, only to get knocked away and pinged off into space. And it's such a small thing that would be so easy to miss, but it's so goofy and hilarious that just adds to the scene. It is a very creative game visually, and audio-wise, it's not bad. I don't think it's terribly spectacular, and honestly, there's not much going on with this that I find to be particularly memorable, aside from the use of the Nutcracker Suite for one boss fight for some reason, but there are some voice clips, and they are really well recorded. And again, when that one boss fight shows up and your little friend tries to show you off, they ping you off to space and it actually goes, ah, and it's like, Again, it just adds to that one little scene. I'm absolutely fixated on that one tiny scene, but it's such a silly moment, and the comedic timing on that is just awesome. It is a great scene, and I think it's a great combination of goofy character design, intricately designed characters, because the giant dog is basically several sprites sort of complexly interacting with one another, not unlike Ernest Evans or, say, Vector Man. And, of course, we have the comedic timing, the voice clips, the goofy music in the background. That one scene culminates pretty much all the highlights of this game in one moment, and it's awesome. Overall, I don't think this game would necessarily win any awards, and indeed, I don't think it did, but it's certainly no slouch either. I think, from an audio and visual perspective, Dynamite Heady is very, very, very good. Now, if you want a copy of Dynamite Heady on the Genesis, well, this is one of the Genesis games that actually isn't terribly expensive. Like, Genesis games, in general, are universally going up in price, except for Fantasy Star 4 for some reason. But that game costs a fortune to begin with. But Dynamite Heady has always just sort of sat at about $20 as it has for, you know, the past 10 years. Like I said, this doesn't seem like one of the most immediately eye-catching or memorable treasure games, and I think because of that, it just doesn't have the same immediate draw to the public, you know? Gunstar Heroes is unbelievably expensive now, but you could buy, like, four copies of Dynamite Heady for the same price. You know, Dynamite Heady is quite affordable still, and there are a fair number of copies out there. It should not be that hard to find. And someone sent me a copy of this on Steam as part of the Genesis Collection. You can get it there, and I believe it's about two, maybe three dollars. Again, it's a DLC. You could buy the whole set as well as part of that collection. And it's very available through other means and other collections. I know the Ultimate Genesis Collection had this. Uh, I, I think I've got two or three other collections that has it as well. The Treasure Box had it. I know that for a fact. The point is, if you want Dynamite Heady, there should not be all that many barriers to getting a copy of Dynamite Heady. But once again, I would recommend you play the Japanese version because it's going to be a lot more approachable and a lot easier to play. Dynamite Heady, it's certainly a great game. I can see why this isn't as fondly remembered as, say, Gunstar Heroes or Alien Soldier. It doesn't have quite as much of a wow factor, it doesn't have as much impact, and it's not quite as action-y. It's more of just a fun, goofy, little humorous adventure with a cute little theme. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great game. It's fun. And if you think this looks interesting, it is. It's challenging beyond all belief, especially if you play the North American version. But Dynamite Heady is not one to skip on if you're building a Genesis collection. I mean, I am right now, and I am eyeing up a copy because it is still affordable and it is a fun game, even if this isn't necessarily the best way to play it on the North American Genesis. But that said, if you can play Dynamite Heady, you should. It's an important piece of Treasure's history, and it is a solid game in its own right. Oh, 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 o